In this episode, our objective is to calculate the density of iron using its crystal structure data. Iron crystallizes in the body-centered cubic structure, which has two atoms per unit cell. Also, we know that the atomic weight of iron is 55.847 grams per mole. We also know that the edge length A of the cube in the body-centered cubic structure for iron has a length of 287.645 picometers. As we recall, a picometer is 10 to the minus 12 meters. So we can shift the decimal point here and we can do it in a more formal way and get our edge length in a more traditional scientific notation by rewriting the 287.645 part as follows. That is equal to 2.87645 times 10 to the second power. Or we can say times 10 squared. So that is the first term here, the 287 part. And then we still have our times 10 to the minus 12 meters. Because these are just numbers, we can use the associative property and regroup them as follows. 2.87645 times 10 squared times 10 to the minus 12 and still with units of meters. Whenever we multiply powers of 10, we add the exponents. So let's just show this off to the side here. So as far as our exponents go, we have 2 plus a minus 12, which is equal to minus 10. So that gives us that our edge length here is equal to 2.87. 6, 4, 5, times 10 to the minus 10 meters. As an aside, we also recall that 10 to the minus 10 meters is equivalent to the non-SI unit of an angstrom, which is roughly the order of the distances between atoms in molecules. For our next step, we would like to convert this length from meters to centimeters. And the way we do that is we multiply by what is essentially a version of the number one. We recall that one centimeter by definition is equal to 10 to the minus two meters. Since the numerator and denominator are equal to each other, this fraction is effectively the number one. And when we multiply by the number one, we do not change the effective value of an expression. We may change what it looks like, but we have not changed its overall value. We can cancel the units of meters, and our answer is going to be given in terms of centimeters, which is what we want. Now, as far as this particular part of the problem, 2.87645, when we have a calculation, it involves the division of two powers of 10. In that case, we want to subtract the exponents to get the new exponent. So, again, putting this off to the side, just to show what we're doing, we have minus 10 as our exponent, minus a minus two. This is equal to minus 10 plus two, which using the properties of sine numbers is minus eight. Therefore, our edge length has been converted to 2.87645 times 10 to the minus eight, and then the units are in centimeters.
Now that we've converted the edge length A into centimeters, 2.87645 times 10 to the minus 8 centimeters, we can use the properties of geometry. And an important fact from geometry is that the volume of a cube is equal to A to the third power A cubed. In this particular case, we are trying to determine the volume of one particular unit cell. The strategy that we're going to use to compute the density is that the density is an intensive function. It does not depend upon the size of the system that we're looking at. So it behooves us to pick the system size that is most convenient for us. And the most convenient size for us, in this case, will be one unit cell. So. In this particular part, we're going to determine the volume of one unit cell. Later, we are going to determine the mass of one unit cell. And then we're going to use those two data to compute the density of iron. So with that in mind, our volume is going to be 2.87645 times 10 to the minus 8 centimeters cubed. Again, using the properties of exponents, this is equal to 2.87645 cubed times 10 to the minus 8 centimeters cubed. We use another property of exponents that when we have a power of 10 and we raise that to a power to get the new exponent, we multiply the exponents. So our new exponent in this case is going to be 10 to the minus 24 because minus 24 is the value we get when we multiply minus 8 times 3. We also have to cube the units and if we cube centimeters we get centimeters cubed. Over here for this expression if we cube that value we get 23.5523. So that the overall volume of one unit cell, we've calculated to be 23.5523 times 10 to the minus 24 cubic centimeters. Now, one thing which you'll notice is that for many of the intermediate computations, I don't take the step of converting it to traditional scientific notation, you also notice that I do not round values. Whenever we do a calculation, it's good to carry extra digits until the very end of the calculation. If you prematurely round, you can make very large errors in your final value. So far, we found that the volume is 23.5523 times 10 to the minus 24 cubic centimeters. In this part, we would like to calculate the mass of one unit cell of iron. And the way we do that is we make use of the fact that we can look up the atomic weight of iron in the periodic table. And we see that it's 55.847, even though it doesn't say it in the tables itself, for the sake of brevity, the units are grams per mole. So we would like to write that out completely trying to figure out the mass of one unit cell. To get that, we start with 55.847 grams of iron in one mole of iron. We also use the fact that in one mole of any substance, so in this case, one mole of iron atoms, that we're going to have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd iron atoms. And this is Avogadro's number. And the last part of the calculation that we need is that in the body-centered cubic unit cell, we have two atoms. So we have two 
atoms of iron in a unit cell that is body centered cubic. So for our next part, we realize that we can begin to cancel units. So we can cancel the units of moles of iron, and moles of iron. We can cancel the units of iron atoms and iron atoms. And the result of our calculation will give us units of grams of iron, which is exactly what we want because we want the mass of one unit cell of iron. And the result that we get for the mass of one unit cell is 18.5477 times 10 to the minus 23rd grams. At this point, we want to do a quick reasonableness check. If we do not have a value with a negative exponent, we know that we have made a mistake because unit cells are so small, their mass is very much less than one gram. The minus 23 comes in because we're dividing in this case. We can imagine that if we had a power of 10 for the numerator, it would be 10 to the zero power because 10 to the zero power is simply one. Recall that when we divide powers of 10, we subtract the exponents. So the exponent for this computation, we would get from zero minus 23, and that is negative 23. So we were able to compute the mass of one unit cell. Now that we have computed the mass of one unit cell, and we have computed the volume of one unit cell, we can use the definition of density, which is simply mass divided by volume. In chemistry, we tend to use the letter D for density. In physics, we use the Greek letter rho. In either case, it's an intensive property and we're using one unit cell as our system size here because we're free to pick whichever one we want. So now we can compute the density and it's simply going to be the ratio of the mass of a unit cell divided by the volume of a unit cell Recall that here we have a computation that involves powers of 10, but we have multiplication and division. And multiplication and division, since it involves ordinary numbers, is associative and commutative. So I can break this up into two parts. I can break it up into a non-powers of 10 part, which is simply the 18.5477 divided by the 23.5523 part. And then a powers of 10 part, which involves the 10 to the minus 23rd power grams and the 10 to the minus 24 power cubic centimeters. For the left hand term, we can just enter this into our calculator and we see that the value we get is going to be 0 0.7875. For the powers of 10, we have division when we divide powers of 10, we subtract the exponents. So let's just show what that's going to be. Our new exponent will be minus 23 minus a negative 24. By the properties of sine numbers, this gives us minus 23 plus 24, which is just equal to the number 1, the loneliness number. So this gives us that our powers of 10, in this case, are going to be times 10 to the first power, and our units are going to be grams per cubic centimeter. For the final step, we recognize that 10 to the first power is simply the number 10. So we can convert this expression into an ordinary number, which is going to be 7.875 grams per cubic centimeter. And this is our density for iron. Our last step, which we always, always, always perform, 
is to do a reasonableness check on it. We know that the density of water is about one, is almost exactly one gram per cubic centimeter. We know that reasonable densities for metals on the face of the earth go from a little less than one up to a little more than 22 grams per cubic centimeter. Since this is safely in the range between one and 22 grams per cubic centimeter, we suspect that we have accurately computed the density. This is a reasonable density for a metal on the face of the earth. I thank you very much for your attention. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a good one.